crypto market right now is below 1.2 trillion dollar we are observing a red day in the market we talked about this scenario yesterday saying that it is in a plain sight that pain was coming and now we can actually see that it is materializing to most extent short term we are building a divergence in the market that looks fine but as you zoom out this is the fear so we haven't yet reached that level of panic and pain because right now this is what you observe right you're nowhere near the bottom you're nowhere near the top agreed but you're trending higher so you still have room to come back to the downside meaning market can still bring in some pain so that's for the crypto market and on the other side it actually shows you the stock market is moving from extreme fear towards greed now i'm thinking like okay maybe it's not just greed it is survival mode banks are collapsing on one side so who do you trust with your money you need to actually be in assets people are moving that out and entering into markets that's a huge possibility there and when we look at the market we do see this happening right now in front of us dollar is bouncing back you can see that this level in the rsi breaking means dollar will bounce back so it's actually coming back up to test historical levels of these resistance before it actually goes back down. So it can be an A, B, C leg of correction where it is trending to the downside and that will mark that local top before we actually start dropping. Now on the other side of this, it's the crypto market and the stock market. When the dollar goes up, you're looking for the market to drop. How low? and for what assets you are looking for panic. That's what we are going to detail. Welcome to the Sanific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. While we discussed about this possibility, say we will bounce and then go back down, say 26,700, 26,800, we actually bounced up and we were coming back down yesterday. Right now, if you look at the market, we already touched 26,700. So I would say that thought process was not wrong and we are there right now. Now, what are we looking forward to? That's going to be a big question here. Right now, what we have to keep in our mind is, okay, this is a daily chart and it does show pain is still on the way. We are halfway through, we still have more room to go. That was just a 13% drop. Now we are looking forward to another 13%. So keep that in mind on a daily, you have another 10, 13% just in Bitcoin. But then when you actually zoom into Bitcoin, you actually see like, okay, mm -hmm, there is something happening here. Say the trend is right now to the downside. So while we focus on this, we understand the fact that, okay, you have done one correction, you bounced up, you then again went back down, bounced up, and then now you're reaching a territory like this. What's happening? Inside that territory, while you're reaching a macro level of support, yes, we think there is a possibility we would break to the downside and go down. But before that, right now you have a possibility, potential divergence extending. Now, while this was playing out on the two-hour chart, we highlighted saying, okay, there is something evolving here. Watch how the market is playing because there are some concerns because there are a lot of opportunities if you are really focused on the market. And that's what we are doing on the real time on a daily basis. Right now, while we look at the market, we also do get the thought process, which is a little bit clear. Uh, we may actually bounce. Now, what do I mean by that? It's not going to be a big bounce where you think you're going to put highs towards $35,000, $40,000. Most likely, it is actually going to be a drop before a short-term move. Now, that short-term move here can actually mean a A, B, C pattern before it actually goes back down. Now, will that be so big or so short? We'll hack have to wait and see but most likely scenario would be we're going to test the range of 28 300 just close to 28 or just about 28 after which we should most likely see the market dropping below this panic coming back into the market going back lower now can that be at 24 will that be at 23 we will have to watch 
the volume, we will have to watch how the market momentum shifts. Right now, yeah, we are at a support and usually at a support, we may still bounce because we've been doing this pattern. Now, yes, it is a short term chart. Yes, it is a four hour chart. We need to see macro chart before we confirm anything because markets are uncertain. We really cannot say what the hell is going to happen right now. So if you actually focus on this, I would put the argument saying like, okay, watch this. We just broke this level. So if you're following the market, last time when you broke the market, the level here, we actually did a small retest and then got rejected. Great. Right now you're breaking another level and below that you have $26,000. Say it's close to 26,700 where you are right now testing, bouncing, playing or flirting with that level. But we need to actually see whether we are actually going to drop heavy. Yes, on the short term chart, you're observing a divergence, but that's not visible on a long term chart. You are now looking for last one year and you really don't see a divergence forming in. The only divergence on this horizon shows you that I'm trending down in the RSI while the price is trending to the upside which means the market is suggesting you a bigger correction. Now, we've been talking about this from at least a month, saying, okay, we have completed this movement to the upside. Most likely scenario after this is going to be something like this. Great. So right now, halfway through, we have already done that phase. It's good to see like the market is doing what we anticipated it to do, but keep in mind the macro scenario is changing, right? Yes, we're going to come back down and then bounce off, but I'm not saying we're actually going to hit this kind of numbers. Yes, I agree fundamentals are so strong, but that doesn't mean you're actually looking at something like this, right? Now, this is back in 2020 saying by 2023, we're going to hit this number. Now, time, if anyone and everyone can be wrong, but the price and the valuation you put in, you need to really talk about it. What's the facts behind your points? Why do you think that's going to happen? You need to explain your valuation method. Fundamentally, yes, it is strong. And while looking at the macro scenario, yes, you do feel like, okay, there is something in it here, right? He's trying to keep it at 589. That does feel like something. And as DAI highlights here, mm, now is he a conspiracy guy? We really don't know. But Right now, keeping that aside and looking at what the hell is happening in the macro market, this is Jamie Dimon coming out and highlighting, okay, we need to actually go against those guys who are shorting the market and informing that in Twitter. And I'm like, okay, there is something wrong. These guys can actually buy stocks and put it everywhere. Great. These guys can go short the market and manipulate the market and pay fine. So if we just take a look, at what amounts these guys were paying in fines. It's like hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars. So that's actually okay for them to do, right? And if you tweet, which is legally okay to do, that's bad. Now, why is that happening right now? Because you see stock market bashing all of these banks right now. And that's fundamentally true. When an empire is collapsing and a currency is declining, you will see all these volatility happening. But remember, it's not about me, you and others who are looking at this thing. You need to understand last month, this guy, Warren Buffett, dropped banks. Now, you should actually go look at which banks he actually dropped and which he added on more to. If you are in those banks, you'll have to think double times before you actually continue. So Berkshire actually moved out of JP Morgan. Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, you know, all these. And he actually doubled down or increased his assets. So the thought process here is like, okay, he's actually adding on to positions in Citigroup, in Ally Financial, Jefferies, New Bank, and Bank of America. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm, that's something to think about. He is now not looking great at these guys. And the reason is the most important point. Now, there's not a small guy we are talking about. We are talking about Warren Buffett, right? And while he give you the highlights, he's talking 
about the red flag. Why? He's suggesting that they are recklessly misleading investors and analysts. One. And two, he's giving you the clear thought process that they are taking dumb risks. And who is he really talking about? Because he just moved out of JP Morgan. He just moved out of Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo. So basically, you just understand the fact that where he's pointing out to. Now that we know what Warren Buffett is doing, last month he did that. And right now, there's a situ situation in the banking shares. Stock market is now digesting the fact that, okay, it's going down. One of the biggest investors is moving out from these stuff. So there is something wrong. If I don't understand how to go through the financial statements, I don't know how to look at these market, the macroeconomics. This guy has a research and development wing inside his brain and then he has the resources. Great. So if he is doing that basic sense, there is something wrong. So that's one of the reasons why you see these guys coming out and putting all the stuff in this woke media. Mass media is just made to kind of, you know, put that cloud so that most of us don't realize the fact. Right now, we are looking at the next stuff here. Now, shout out to Genevieve actually putting it, this one out. Now, you actually have to realize this fact. We are right now comparing U.S., Mm -hmm. to Mexico, Greece, Brazil. So that's one of the biggest economy in the world or the biggest economy in the world compared to others like Brazil, Greece and Mexico. And this is what we are observing. The credit default swaps literally means like investors are not worried about this particular thing going boom, defaulting, right? And this is what it looks like. It's actually going up, 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 up through the roof, through the skies. So right now, standing here, we can actually put that argument. Like if you are dependent on US banks, it may not actually look really good right now. The things are looking really bad. But on the Web3 side of things, which is a little bit, you know, polished, right now, yeah, the leaders are slowly coming out. They're actually taking some action that looks promising. Now, how long this process takes, we really don't know. The way the banks work, the way Congress and all these documentation, the process works, it may take some time. But for us right now, the only thing which you have is the market. So we actually go into the market, we look at the market and try to listen what the market is saying. So if it's actually giving us a speed saying, okay, I've actually done the structure. I'm actually most likely going down. Now you're like, okay, I'm a student. I'm waiting to see something evolving at these levels. And if you're literally waiting through this, you can actually see a ton of these assets. Say, for example, right now with all this great bullish news for XLM, if you actually look at XLM, there is something evolving there, right? And I'm like, okay, this does look interesting. See, on a short-term chart, when you go look at XLM, it shows like, okay, the price here is trending lower with lower lows, but the RSI is slowly going up. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. short-term, we are building some divergence. That is great, actually. That is really, really great, in my opinion. Because the way I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, I'm waiting here. I'm looking at things. And while I'm observing the fact, I'm watching the fact that, okay, we put in a high here, highlighting, okay, the short-term rally is done. Great. Now, we go to the bottom. We want to see where the bottom is. And the bottom shows you, like, I'm inside a range where the bottom is rising. So, the support is increasing. Each time you go down, you're not going too low to make new fear, new panic range. Instead, you're building on. So, Imagine you are an investor in this market. Or let me take myself. I'm an investor in this market. When this goes lower and I think the market is hitting a bottom, I would think like, okay, let me add some positions. Now, being frank, we've been adding positions yesterday, today. We've been adding into a lot of the different projects inside this market where those of those were actually getting beat, beaten up. Like while we were focusing on this, most of them were down like 40, 50 percent. Great. In from the local highs, from the recent local highs, they actually drop 50% or more. And it is an opportunity if you are looking at it on the right direction. Because when you zoom out, the first question you should ask yourself is to make money in the market, you need to buy low and sell high. Now, the biggest challenge here is understanding what's low and what is high. 
First, zoom out and look at, okay, what was the high? It was like 0.8. Where are we right now? 0 0.07. That was the bottom, close to the bottom. Right now, we are at 0 0.089. It is somewhere close to the bottom. So if you are splitting your buys and entering once here, once at the bottom, if it actually goes that low, it actually enhances your ROI potential comparing where it can actually go back up. Last time, when the market actually showed you that it was building or it was working on a pattern like this, we know what happened or what followed after that. Right now, here we are, we are looking at this asset and it shows you like, okay, there is something evolving here. We don't know how this is gonna evolve, how long it's gonna take, but odds show us the fact that, okay, that has a long way to go to the upside. Now, just look at the RSI, it kind of gives you an easy story here. Now, what's the story? It's a rounded bottom giving you a perfect highlight, saying I'm moving up whether you want it or not. And each time it bounces up, it come back down close to the support. And that's the time when I think the market gives you the best risk adjusted return. Now, as a trader, you can buy in whenever it's dropping 30, 40, 50% and it's at a support because you don't know whether it's gonna bounce or not. But on a macro long-term position, one of the easiest thing to do is to look at what Bitcoin is doing. If Bitcoin is actually breaking lower, great, hold on. Wait until you actually think about adding new positions because you really wanna understand where Bitcoin is right now. So on a daily, you see that Bitcoin is breaking to the downside, on the weekly, it's breaking to the downside from different support ranges. And you really have to wait with patience and wait till it reaches a macro support. Maybe it's 24,000, you can add something. Maybe it's gonna be 21, maybe it's gonna be 23 or inside this range. But what matters is where your existing positions are and how deep you're averaging down. Because if you are that guy who bought at 66,000, 67,000, this anyway in that range is great for you. You are averaging down. But if you are that guy who bought in at 15,000, 15, 16,000 range, now you're like, okay, I really don't want to average up. I'm actually waiting for this to come back down. Maybe 23, maybe 24, I'm buying it all, right? You're already in at the bottom, you are in green, so your sentiment is great. But what we understand from the market, on the macro is that the trend has changed and the trend is bullish. Because when we talk about divergence, remember last time when we discussed about the divergence here, price was trending to the downside at a time when the RSI was trending to the upside. Now, not a lot of people actually believed back then while we were discussing about this on a regular basis. Now, here we are at the top. So it actually gives us some confidence to say like, okay, these things actually work. We were following this stuff. Because at the top here, while you were putting in a higher high, bear high, the market actually shows you the strength reduced. Now, it's the opposite. The strength is increasing, but the trend line is so far. You have a long way to go to reach the trend line and still bounce. So you can still remain bullish and go higher, maybe 80, 90, $100,000 per Bitcoin. But first, you need to actually see price coming back down while the RSI correct back down to this trend line support. So now take that same perspective, say Bitcoin is gonna drop. Now we are gonna look at what XRP is literally doing. Because right now when you actually go into the market, you observe all these assets are getting bet up. They're kind of, you know, getting whooped for sure. Some of these in 30 days, they're down like, 50%, right? We're actually observing the fact that these are getting hit hard. Now, it's not only in the 200 levels, it's also in the first hundreds. We actually see these coins are getting whooped 30, 40% down on the macro. Now, as you go into the smaller coins, the micro caps, you will literally observe those coins are heavily volatile, right? And there would be news from Binance and others saying, we are delisting this, we are delisting that, we are moving them into this zone because their developers are not that active and all. Now, you're watching some more fear and panic entering that level. So you need to ask yourself, do you strongly believe in that asset? And for me, there is no questioning the fact that XRP is the strongest asset in the market of payments for sure. Whenever you look for the market and understand like, okay, these guys are actually doing something better than the most out there. 
They're killing the competition for sure, but the price action is not reflecting that on the short term narrative. But if you actually zoom out and look where the price was in 2015, 2016, 2017, now you understand, okay, mm -hmm. price is higher compared to that level. Now, yeah, we're zooming in on the chart. Now, while we look at this, yeah, we've been talking about this. The price should come back down, 0 0.4, everything that happened. We are happy that it is moving that way. Now, the key level right now is to watch something positive, is to really see positive things evolving. On the short term narrative, is it actually playing out? Yeah, it does look good, meaning you're actually making a divergence with to the RSI and the price. Now, even if you say like, okay, this is how it's actually playing out, that still is a divergence. So I'm actually using the candle close here because the RSI gives you better perspective with the candle close in my thought process. So right now you're watching the fact that, okay, short term, the market is suggesting you, I may actually move back up, maybe 0.45, maybe 0.47. We'll have to wait and see. That's a possibility, but keep in mind, this is the trend line. So if you're actually coming back up to 0.46, that's still just a retracement. You need to break this level to see the trend line is changing. The trading range is changing. Say, just for example, if you look at this trading range, this was a time when we were coming to the downside, we were trading that range. Now we broke that level. So if we go back up, it's like we are coming back up, making a double bottom. Now to get um, clarity, they just make like, you know, look at what's happening here. You're actually putting in a double bottom compared to what the RSI is doing. Like that's why we use the line chart. It uses the close of a candle and gives you better perspective. Great. So now you get that perspective while you're going up, entering into that trading range. Yeah, it's good because after that, now we are looking at this range. Yeah, for sure. We'll have to first enter into this range and break that range before we can look for the higher price points. But it's not only XRP which is showing you divergence on the short term scenario. We are observing different assets like while we looked at Bitcoin, it showed us there is divergence forming. While we looked at XRP, it showed us there is divergence forming. But Ether on the same time horizon is not showing us that. Now I'm like, okay, that's weird. We should have watched something like that in Ether, whereas it's happening the other way. So for example, Ether went up, broke this pattern, showing, okay, a bearish pattern is breaking bullish and then got rejected immediately coming back below, went back up to retest that trend line. Now, I know not a lot of people believe trend lines, but this is the market, right? You are just connecting all this highs. Now, you do have standard deviations for sure, but easiest thing in the market to look for is the zone. You can actually see a little bit up, a little bit down. You do get standard deviations. You understand the range. So you broke to the downside, you went back, you tested that, you got rejected, and you came back to a zone where the trend line actually shows you like each time the price comes that level, it's bouncing. So that's the supply and demand equation of the market back then. Now you broke below that zone. You're fetching for new supply to the downside. So imagine the shorters are here in the market. They shorted the market here. They're buying it back here to give it back and take their profit. What happens? The buying power comes into the market. Prices go back up. Someone else shot the market at this range, believing it's going to go down. It gets rejected to the downside. So we need to actually look for the short-term fluctuations as well as the long-term moves. Because the long-term move is something positive. Uh, I mean, you can't actually take another word and say it's so negative because right now, this is what the market actually shows you. You're coming back down to the trend line. It's not bad. It is positive. It is the healthy move in the market. But while we come down, the phase where we are correcting to the downside, it may not actually look beautiful, for sure. If you entered at the recent top, 100%, you won't actually even agree with that thought process that this is beautiful to observe this coming back down. We've been talking about the same from 2,100 in Ether, 30, 31,000 in Bitcoin, and now we are watching how the price is playing that stuff out. Now, if you actually look at the same thought process here, the A, B, C, how low can this go, right? We are actually watching how low this really can go. If it actually comes to 1,500, that's going to be a great range, which I personally think that is going to be a good buying zone. Now, 
Are you really willing to buy Ether because it's an outdated technology? Yeah, maybe it's an outdated technology for sure. It has like all these issues with the scalability, the fees and all. Heavy friction. Agreed. But the thought process here is not what I like or what you like. Is the market loving it? Is the market buying that whenever it becomes an opportunity? Right? Whenever it come back down to a trend line, which act as a support, is the market buying it? Because last time, when we observed the fact that this trend line was acting as a support resistance zone, it got rejected. But next time when it come back down, it bounced, even though it was in a heavy corrective movement. Right? So the time when you break through this level, something changes. Now you are still above that, so that's not changing. Instead, what changed is the downside movement. This was the downside trend line, you broke that. So now coming back down to retest that and bounce is actually bullish on the long-term scenario. But still, keep in mind, to reach that level, the price still have 25% to the downside. That's not a small thing on the short term, it can be painful. That's why we talked about this. The pain is coming. The macro tsunami, the base entering, everything we talked about right now is slowly materializing. So you need to have the level of patience. I know this video is comparatively longer, but understand the fact that market is showing you opportunities if you have patience. If you are looking for the proper targets, you actually get to buy in at the support. Now that's the zone. It's not the actual bottom. It can be somewhere close to the bottom and that's what matters. So when the dollar bounces higher, reaches a resistance and shows you a divergence, now it's time for you to act because most likely on the other side, markets show you the opposite. So when this goes down, that goes up, you have an ability to profit from that if you take the wise decisions. So guys, if you see value for your time, please do hit that like and subscribe button. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.